Good morning all, it's post bag. Okay, let's do this big one first. What's in here? I think I know what's in here. Loads of LEDs. So this is a big batch of LEDs. Now these are three color LEDs. So they have four legs on them, red, green, blue, obviously. And each LED is driven by a chip and uh, let's see what number the chip is. Well, it looks to me like the uh, number on the chip has either been blacked over or scraped off or something. I can't see any number on there. I'll get in a bit closer in a moment. But it does say uh, on the back of the PCB, if I can get that without the light bleaching it, it says WS2811S. Let's just have a look at the um, chip again. No, there's definitely no readable markings on that chip. So these are NeoPixels, as Adafruit would describe them. They're addressable RGB LEDs. Uh, what you do is you find the connector, which is there. I think power goes on these two leads. They don't look very thick for taking the power to drive all 50 of these. Uh, oh, that's a daisy chain connector at the end, so that you could carry on putting more devices on. But um, what you do is you send a signal down the uh, signal line, which is presumably that middle one, the green one, I presume. White is ground. Yeah, white is probably ground. White is probably also ground for supplying power. And this signal is a, a very fast digital signal. I think uh, the high pulse, if it's short, and I'm talking really short, nanoseconds, um, if it's short, it's a one. I think if it's long, it's a zero. I've got a feeling the long pulse length isn't that critical. And then when you've piled down data for as many of these things as you, uh, you want to pile data down, you leave a gap. And I think that's got to be more than 50 milliseconds or something like that. And then each chip says, OK, I've got my data, blat. And they all write it out to the LEDs. And so all the LEDs change state at the same time. Now, because the data stream running down this data line um, needs to be so fast, or at least the pulse widths need to be so short, Adafruit, uh, Lady Ada, Limor Freed, in her driver for this particular chip, used assembly language because... Uh, using C, she couldn't guarantee that she'd get pulses uh, the required length. So she resorted to using assembly language instructions. And so that's why I've bought this, because I want this to be the culmination of my assembly language pick tutorials, uh, that we'll write some simple loops to send data to these lights and see how many of them we can light up before it all gets too complicated. So here they are on eBay, DC 5 volt. Now you can get some 12 volt versions of these. I'm not quite sure how they take 12 volts down to five, but anyway, I wanted five volt. 50 pieces on a big long string. WS2811 is the little eight pin chip in the uh, molding there. RGB full color, 12 millimeter. That's the diameter of the LED casing. Doesn't look like 12 millimeter. Pixels, digital addressable LED string. So this is $12.25, free shipping from Fashion Woman Sale. Uh, no, it's Fashion Women Sale, or it might be Fashion Women's Ale, possibly. Right, description, blah, blah, blah. Specifications, DC 5 volts, working current 60 milliamps. Well, that's got to be 60 milliamps per LED module, and that must be a combination of the LED current and the chip current, of course it's going to vary wildly dependent on how uh, bright you set each of the three colours, so I don't quite know what that means. Uh, power 0.3 watts per LED, dimension 12 millimetres. Well okay, I think I see what they're saying. I mean the LED itself is probably only mm, 7 or 8 millimetres in diameter, but the whole plastic sort of moulding here uh, is 12 millimeters in diameter. Right, a quick look at the WS2811 data sheet, a signal line, 256 gray level, 
levels of each of the three colors. Three channel, constant current LED drive IC, output port compression 12 volts. No idea what that means. Does that mean that it's sort of open collector or open drain or something and you can source, uh, no, sync up to 12 volts? Don't know. Built in stably volt. Only add a resistance to IC VDD feet when under 24 volts power supply. So I presume it means that you can uh, drive this chip off pretty much any voltage up to 24 volts by putting a resistance onto the VDD pin, but it's all a bit mysterious. Right, here are the uh, pins. We've got ground VDD, three outputs for red, green and blue, a set pin, a data in pin and a data out. So data comes in and is cascaded to data out and goes on to the next chip. Not sure what set does. Let's just take a quick look at VDD. Well, power supply voltage VDD absolute maximum uh, 6 to 7. So presumably it's just 5 volts. Uh, low voltage output current, uh, typically 18.5 milliamps. It doesn't give a maximum for that though. So how hard you can drive this chip, can't see from here. Uh, switching characteristics. Right, here we are. Low speed mode time. The zero code, high voltage time, um, is 0.5 microseconds plus or minus 150 nanoseconds. Um, the one code, high voltage time, is 1.2 microseconds, but 0.5 microseconds, that's only 500 nanoseconds, plus or minus 150. That's quite fast. Oh, and here, the reset time, you go low for more than 50 microseconds, not milliseconds, 50 microseconds, and then the chip latches the data. So here are the waveforms. Uh, for a zero code, you have a short high and a long low. For one code, you have a long high and a short low. And then for the reset code, uh, you just have a minimum of this 50 microseconds, which is here. Now, this talks of sending the first 24 bits, then the second 24 bits, then the third 24 bits. I assume you can have more than three. Uh, the composition of the 24 bits is that you send uh, red bit seven to red bit zero, then green bit seven to green bit zero then blue bit 7 to blue bit 0 uh, and of course the, the 8 bits define the brightness level in 0 to 255 there are 256 brightness levels this is how you send the data in that sequence so this is how you wire the LEDs for 5 volts you just put the three LEDs uh, from 5 volts into the outputs uh, they're talking about a 33 ohm resistor there it says, to prevent the reflection and hot swap protection, we suggest to, con uh, to connect a 33 ohm resistor at the data input or output port for impedance. Not sure whether that's been implemented in the string that I just bought. If you get the 12 volt version, uh, it looks like you have to wire it like this with three LEDs in each uh, column to absorb or, well, to spread the 12 volts across them. Uh, there's a resistor in there. We've got an R1 here. What was that on the 5 volt one? Ah, okay, that's 100 ohms. So not sure how much of this has been implemented. Well, the only resistor I can see is that one there. It's hard to see, but it's a 151, so it's 150 ohms. So I'm guessing that's the 100 ohm resistor uh, from VDD, which it would appear to be because there's five volts at the top there, down to uh, whatever pin of the chip that was connected to. There's a capacitor there, but I can't see any other components on that board. So it'd be quite nice, wouldn't it, to have something to drive that string of uh, RGB LEDs. I wonder what's in here. Oh, look, an LED driver. Right, there's uh, a remote control here. Uh, it's got a little pull-out tab, but bizarrely, no battery. Finding lots of things shipping now with no battery. I might have a CR2025. Right, so the unit um, has a little microcontroller on the board there, presumably. Uh, it's five volts. It has a little infrared receiver chip poking out of the heat shrink. At that end, it has a connector, which looks like it should connect directly onto my uh, string of LEDs. And so all I need to do is put 5 volts into there. Well, that should be possible, shouldn't it? Um, oh, mode adjust, speed, blah, blah, blah. So I'd probably have a 
whole set of nasty patterns on here. I think I'm going to try and power this up. Right, power shop to the rescue with the CR2025, so that's that. And I'm hoping that this uh, power bank, which is, uh, for people who want to know what it is, it's the Kidian, I think that's Q-I-D-I-A-N, I think it is, QD184-SX. It's the best power bank ever made because it's got the multi-voltage output. And I think 5 volts will come out of that output, so that should plug straight into there. Let's give it a try. Uh, what on earth is this? That's got a three pin plug on it with uh, VDD or VCC ground and signal. And this has got a two pin plug. And what's more, if I try and line up the colors, uh, the plug is upside down. I suppose I could just jam that in there. But then I've got to find uh, five volts. I suppose I could put a separate five volts on there. It wouldn't really matter as long as what comes through here has a five volt signal on it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to jam that in there. Can I do that now? It's not going to like it much. But it's gone in. Let's see if it works. Right, I've got a separate uh, five volt power supply for the uh, LED string and then signal. I'm just using green and white, having shoved that connector in upside down because it's all incompatible. And yet the connectors looked in the eBay listings like they would just be a straight plug fit. So now I've got to put five volts in here. Wait for the bang. No bang. Okay, now I turn on this five volts. Oh, how interesting. I haven't even pressed any buttons on the controller yet. Let me take power off the controller. Yeah, and then those just lock at the last pattern they were set at. Let me just reboot them. Yeah, so no pattern, power up the controller, and it immediately goes into a nice swirly color pattern. That's really nice. Uh, what does the remote do? Off. Yeah, that works. On. That's oh, amazing what pleases. We electronics uh, people when you get a few flashing lights, isn't it? Oh, now I'm trying all the different colors. Blue, green, lovely, red. Oh, this is fantastic. Yellow. Come on, pick it up. Uh, white. Yeah, that's not a bad white. Uh, how do I make patterns happen? Auto. Yeah, speed. Faster, faster, faster. Oh, I could have fun playing with this all day. In fact, I think I might just abandon this video now and play with this. That's weird. Oh, it's going through all the different patterns available. And they're probably quite nasty, some of them. Hmm, good fun though. So inside here, there will be a little microcontroller. I would expect to see it uh, an ST microcontroller in there because I think they're cheaper. Oh, it's getting quite warm. Yeah, it's only driving the first chip though, because then each chip drives the subsequent chip uh, itself. I've got external power for the string, so this isn't driving any LEDs uh, using this five volts. Don't know why that's getting warm. But uh, yeah, so that'll be a microcontroller in there. And then when I start doing the PIC tutorials, we'll try, uh, once we start driving GPIO ports, toggling the bits up and down at the right speed so that the data is recognized by these chips to generate patterns. They won't be as beautiful as this, but uh, if we can just get a couple of LEDs to come on at a certain color, that will be an achievement. So that's my aim and that's why I've bought all this stuff. So this is the 21 key LED Symphony uh, infrared remote controller for WS2811 and WS2812. Now the WS2812 is just the LED module, I think it's a five millimeter square white plastic module with the LEDs inside and the chip integrated inside. Otherwise they're the same. I think they're certainly the same in terms of um, the format of data that you send to them. Uh, LED strip, light, DC five volts. It was $4.69 free shipping from ePacket Shop. And so before I move on, just another quick look at the mesmerizing patterns. M plus seems to change to 
a new pattern. Of course, I'm trying to um, be received by that receiver there. Let's try another pattern. Yeah, colors. Oh, red, greens, and oh, going all through the uh, seven or eight different solid colors. Oh, I just love this. Right, what's this? One times controller, three dollars. Now this has literally come in through the letterbox in the last hour. Hmm. Oh, it's another LED controller. Oh, and it's got the proper... No, it hasn't. Has that got the proper connector? Let's have a look. Right, this one's described as a NeoPixel RGB controller. Uh, there's a blob there, and WS2811 as well. There's a dot there for 5 volts. You had to choose between uh, 12 volts and 5 volts. Infrared again. Here's the controller. Pull the little tab out. Now, is it going to be batteryless again? I suspect it might come out. Yes, it's batteryless again, but it's also a CR2025, and I have another one. Now, they've in it very generously supply a 2.1 millimeter plug with bare ends. Well, I don't need that. Yeah, so it's the same issue. This is a two pin plug on the string of lights and a three pin plug on the controller. So, once again, uh, I'm going to have to jam that in essentially the wrong way around. Get in there. Ah, it's difficult. But that seems to have gone in. It's the wrong way around. There's the infrared receiver. Now, I'm half expecting this to be identical to the other one. Uh, so that was the other one. Let's get the power bank. Okay, this time let's power up the... Uh, light string so nothing happens there now put five volts into the controller oh different pattern uh, what does this do off on uh, oh this one looks very different flash oh yeah that flashes jump that's what jump is meteor oh that's quite nice Oh, so maybe this has a different set of patterns. I'm going to be busy all day, aren't I? No colour buttons on here, though. I can't set, uh, pick specific colours. And what's WWW? I dread to think. Yeah, I have no idea what this is doing, but, meh, fun, and it works. A bit like the other one. Well, WWW seems to be white and white, white. White and wonderful white. It's just different, two different brightnesses of white. That's red. Oh, that actually goes through all the colours. Yeah. Bit of a mysterious remote on this one, though. Hmm, one other thing. I wonder what happens if I use the wrong remote on the wrong unit. Uh, weird things happen. Basically, it gets very confused. It doesn't know what I'm doing. Even off doesn't work. Does on work? No. So, oh look, they're all going off in sequence. Yeah, so very muddled if you use the wrong remote for the wrong uh, controller box. This one's got a removable base. Oh, what's that chip? We can have a quick look at that. Right, magnifying glass. Yes, it's an ST, STM8S, uh, is that 00, 5K6, T6, I think. But yeah, an ST microcontroller. They always seem to be ST microcontrollers. I just think perhaps they are the cheapest microcontrollers. Uh, what's that, a regulator, most likely? So really, it's not much, is it? It's... um. An LED probably for reverse polarity protection. A regulator, not sure why. Is that a regulator? Why would you need a regulator? Oh, maybe it's 3.3 volts. Who knows? Uh, the microcontroller, which has really only got one output. Oh, and an input for the infrared, of course. Uh, yeah, one output, which sends the data down that uh, green line. And that's pretty much it. So this one is a DC 5 volts, 12 volts. Hmm, you can choose between 5 volts and 12 volts here. Uh, 24 key, wow, three extra keys. 
IR remote controller, WS2811, WS2812B, pixel LED strip light module. This one was $4.66, free shipping from 2012 top deal. Right, I'm going to throw an old one in the mix now. I don't know how long I've had this. I have genuinely no idea what it is. Let's find out. Mm, oh, it's a red board. What's that? I can't tell what that is. No, I've no memory of what this is at all. It's got a switch, uh, four LEDs there marked from H to L. Is it something to do with lithium cells? And several chips on there. Oh, an LM324 op amps. What are these two? BA7G22, are those? Uh, oh, 4410, I've got a feeling those are MOSFETs. Yeah, they probably are, because you can see that four pins on one side are common and three pins on the other are common and then there's a gate signal. So this is something to do with lithium cells is my guess, but I can't remember what it is. Well, it turns out it's this, it's an eight amp lithium ion lithium charger battery protection board, LED capacity indicator, 18650. Uh, $5.28 free shipping from Ianhu81. Uh, let's see what it does. Well, it's 8 amp high current output capability, so that's quite a fast charge. Can be used for 18650 battery, four segment LED battery indicator, overcharge protection at 4.25 volts, uh, overcharge recovery 4.05, so the protection circuit switches back off at 4.05, over discharge protection 2.5, that's very low, isn't it? and over discharge recovery when the cell gets back up to three. Uh, operating current, eight amps, 10 amps for less than five seconds, four LEDs, working current about five milliamps. The button is pressed only current. Hmm. Right, I'm assuming that five milliamps, what it's saying is it's only gonna draw five milliamps when you press the button. And I presume pressing the button will uh, show the battery indicator. Yes, it does. Press the button and battery indicator work. Release the button. Battery indicator stops working. If you need to have the show, just a button you can short circuit. Okay, so I'm taking it that um, when you let go of the button, it's going to use a lot less than five milliamps. But I'd like to know what it draws when it's in its sort of quiescent state. It needs to be down in the microamps region, really. Well, I don't think this is a charger board because it just has battery minus battery plus, out minus out plus. Um, I'm assuming that the LM324 is being used to drive the different LEDs. Uh, so it's just a bunch of comparators driving the LEDs at different voltages. The only other thing on here are the two MOSFETs and that chip, which might be a, a cell protection chip. Uh, what's the number on there? Don't think I'm going to bother to look this up, but it's uh, a VC35, is it? Is that what that says? Well, I don't think it's a chargeable because there's no charging circuitry. So it's just a protection board and a voltage monitoring board. Uh, that seems to be all it is. Okay, moving on. What's in here? Oh, I didn't even cut that. I know what's in here. I know because you get clues on the front, either the declared cost or all that sort of stuff. It's a watt meter. So this is a watt meter, the sort of thing that uh, radio control model enthusiasts use to measure uh, voltage, current and power uh, when I don't, I don't know when they're charging batteries or discharging them or how much current a model takes. But uh, solar power enthusiasts can also benefit from one of these. Um, they're very cheap. I think this was about $8, a bit less, I think. But before I look at the eBay list, I want to open it up. It's very high current, 100 amps. Um, it's also self-powered because there's no power input. I think it's self-powered. I'll find out in a minute. Okay, so I mean, it has a standard um, 16 by 2 LCD alphanumeric sort of thing. 
uh, and then a board stuck to the back onto which these wires are connected. Let me just get all this stuff out. Right, there's no possibility of getting the LCD board off the measurement board because they've just used some pins which go straight through. I assume they have, I don't think that comes away. No, that's not in any sort of socket. So you can't see a lot. Uh, positive goes straight through. Current is obviously measured in the negative. I'm going to have to try and get a light in there. So you can see there's a huge great current measuring resistor. Oh, can we read what that says? R O O something. Can't quite make that out, but it's a massive resistor. It's in the negative line, so it's measuring current in that line. Um, also on that board, there's some sort of microcontroller. You can see there, there probably isn't a lot else. It's just measuring voltage and current and then multiplying those two together to indicate power. Um, yeah, let's fire this thing up. Right, bench power supply, which I've set to 24 volts, one amp. Oh, load and save. Yes, it's in its verbose mode. Um, so 24 volts should be fine because it can take up to 60 volts. I believe it's self-powered. Got to make sure these don't short out, obviously. Um, although I could put a load on there and, and see this thing measuring watts. But uh, let's switch on. All right, that has come on. It's got no backlight. Has it got no backlight? No, I don't think this one, this one does have a backlight. I think some of them do. <laughs> what a swizz. I bought one without a backlight. Okay, I'm going to have to have a front light then. So, uh, where's my torch? Right, so we've got 24.13 volts, it says. Mm, oh, that's, oh, that's cycling around. So, yeah, so uh, hard to know whether that's exactly right. Let's put a load on here because it's not really showing anything very useful. Right, 24 volt bulb, which is flat out at 24 volts. That's going to get hot quite soon. Uh, 0.9 amps. Uh, we've got volts, uh, M, watts peak down on the bottom left, amp hours, uh, watt hours. 24.06 volts, 21 watts, which is correct. It's a 21 watt bulb, 0.9 amps. Watts, peak, amp hours. Yeah, lots of interesting data cycling around. There are no buttons on here, so you can't change uh, what options it gives you. But yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? And self-powered up to, hmm, well, 60 volts. Let's shove 40 volts through it, see what happens. Now, obviously, I've disconnected the uh, bulb because I don't want to put 40 volts through that bulb. But this self-powered meter should be happy on that sort of voltage. Actually, I think this only goes up to 38 Let's put this up to 38 and see if it's still happy. There we go. On. And yeah, that's still happy. 38.17 volts. No amps or watts, of course. So there must be um, some sort of regulator on the measuring board which can regulate up to 60 volts down to the sort of 5 volts or whatever is needed for the CPU. That's quite interesting. I wouldn't mind having a look at that, but I'd have to destroy this probably or unsolder all of those connections, which would be a bit of a hassle. Uh, quite a high current draw, 43 milliamps at 38 volts. Um, oh no, if I bring this down, what am I bringing down? Perhaps I'll switch it off. Let's see what happens at um, I don't know, 24 volts. So it was 43 milliamps, wasn't it, at 38 volts? Uh, 24 volts, nice and accurate, and now it's taking 30 milliamps, I think that was, 24 volts, 36 milliamps, yeah. So this item is a 100 amp, 60 volt DC radio control helicopter airplane battery power analyzer watt meter balancer, it's certainly not a balancer. Uh, $7.73, free shipping from Fight Yourself. And if you're wondering why I just shouted Fight Yourself, I think it was an Alan Partridge episode. I think Lynn woke him up unexpectedly and he shouted Fight You at her. So that's where that came from. Should we just have one more? <laughs> but I warn you, this is a unisex LED waterproof aircraft sports digital display. 
wristwatch and every day at about, I don't know, 11 o'clock or something, this thing starts beeping, so I'm pretty sick of it. Oh, it's white. I think this is the one with the really weird shape. Hmm. Well, it's really big and really heavy and it's got a protective film on it, which is preventing us seeing the display. Oh, no, it isn't preventing us seeing the display. The display is just terrible. It's kind of inverse LCD. That's a mess, isn't it? Um, it's got a light. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, what's that? Well, it goes through eight different colours by the look of it, but it's hopeless, isn't it? It's only in the middle of... Oh, what's that? Why is it flashing now? It's gone completely berserk. It's rubbish on blue, isn't it? Not too bad on the other colours. I mean, it's really hideous, isn't it? It looks like it might have a stopwatch, but I don't know. Mode. It's absolutely awful. I think I might let the viewers decide what I do with this. Should I do a teardown, an overvolt, uh, drive over it in my car? I'm certainly not going to wear it. It's really chunky. I think a teardown would be quite nice. But you decide what I do with this watch. Incidentally, this is the last watch now. I haven't bought any more watches. I just went mad and I bought half a dozen watches and I have no idea why. This one has to be the worst of the lot. Well, I thought it might be easier to read if I peeled this front thing off, but actually that's quite clear, isn't it? So no, it doesn't make much difference. It's just completely impossible to see. And the light doesn't help. It's the worst watch in the world. Right, here it is. I bought it from Heaven Stores, uh, but that was back in April. It was $3.15. But what can I search for? Uh, premium LED sports watch? Yes, that's found it. It's the uh, premium LED sports watch, whatever. $3.15, Heaven Stores. Nobody's going to buy this, are they? So I don't know why I'm even doing this. I mean, it's not even LED, is it? It's a sort of reversed out liquid crystal. Not light emitting diode. If it was light emitting, it wouldn't look completely black when you stare at it. And so there we are. Those are today's post bag items. Cheerio.